Hi there, folks. I'm Emily. And I'm Elle. And you might notice something kind of different, and that is that Elle has temporarily, at least if this is a trial run, lifted the tape from the center of the room and allowed me to come within six feet of her person. Well, I actually made a box for her to stand in that is within six feet of my personal person space. Yes, but this is progress. I'm definitely considering this progress. And I have to say that this is the happiest I felt in such a long time because, you know, there's something really important about human connection. Don't you think, Elt? Yeah. So we're not, I don't, I, I don't know what she's talking about anymore. She's, I, as long as she stays in her box, I think we'll all be fine. I just think that it's so important to have other people around because you can get very lonely when you're alone. That's something that I've learned. Okay. I don't I don't know what you're talking about. Oh. I thought I thought maybe we were connecting and that's why you let me even with the box. I know it's different, but I thought maybe that's what was going on here. It was like a Oh, I miss you too. <laughs> Isn't that what the flowers meant? Those flowers were from you, right? No, the flowers weren't for me. I was hoping she was going to come over to my side to make a smoothie, but apparently she's not because she's still just talking to me. So I might have to make my own smoothie. You could share it with me. <sighs> Anyways, <laughs> that's a good segue now into what we're going to talk about. Oh, actually it is because we're good. To... It's supposed to be a musical film, but it's really just a film with some musical numbers in it. But it makes sense because it really fits Emily's mood right now, which is very la 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 la. Oh my gosh. I know. We're going to talk about La La Land. Does anybody even remember that it's out is the first question. That it's out? out. Yeah, because it was like really big when it first came out. Oh. I think I haven't heard of it since. You know what? I think that happens so often with with uh, media these days that yeah. something is super big. It's like it gets its 15 minutes and then it's... Gone, which I guess is how most things are. It's very rare that something is such a great work of art that it has lasting power. Which is ironic because we now have the technology to keep things for way longer than they used to be able to. Right. <laughs> but we don't create... Maybe we create so much that it's really hard for something to stand out as great when you had a printing press and you can only make so many you know, new books to publicize to people. Things could stand out. Yeah. It's also so intense when something first comes out. So you have like so much intensity and then it's over and it just seems like it just gets cut off. Yeah. Which is basically the new cycle. <laughs> That's true. It yeah. does It does uh, translate to that too. Yeah. But we're going to talk about it anyways. Oh, also I think The Greatest Showman came out afterwards. So it wasn't like the musical. But anymore. there were a couple years in between that and, or at least a year. There was enough time in between it. That it wasn't like right on top of each other, I don't think. Yeah, that's true. La La Land is 2016, and The Greatest Showman, I think, must have been 2018. 20, oh, 2017. Well, yeah, you, you know what? My life that. changed yeah. so much in between those two, it felt like there was a lot more time in See, between. There you go. Intensity makes everything feel more. <laughs> Anyways, La La Land. So, the good thing about La La Land is for our rating scales, um, balance is a zero, as well it should be. Language is a four because even though the film's rated PG-13, they do drop the F-bomb. It's almost like, oh, we allow you to have one F-bomb in PG-13, so now it's mandatory to drop one. Right. Whatever. Okay. Just because you can doesn't mean you have to. Yeah. And romance is a two because they do make out a lot, but they don't go past that. Which is actually good to also. their credit. Yeah. Ironically. <laughs> no, because also anytime now that it's an adult film, apparently everyone just has to just take their clothes off. Apparently well, don't you just walk outside and take your yeah. clothes off? That thing you do every time you meet a guy that you just connect and your eyes connect, you just take your clothes off? Right. Yeah. I mean, if if you ever went outside. I know you don't go outside, so... <laughs> well, because that's what happens. You take your clothes <laughs> off when you go outside, so you got to stay inside. And this was written and directed by Damon Chazelle, who... Um, he's got a thing for jazz. I think he started off with... with so, like, all this... Actually, First Man doesn't have jazz in it, I don't think. I don't know if it does. I didn't see it. Is it really a movie but, by... Yeah, exactly. So for... Like, because Whiplash is all about jazz musician. This is about jazz musician. You got Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling are in it. And it won six Oscars. It was nominated for 14. Which was a big deal. The only other two films that have been nominated for 14 were all about Eve in 1950. Wow. And then Titanic. Wow. I don't know if 14 is the most, but those were the only other two that had been nominated that's certainly a lot even if it's not the most there's definitely a lot of nominations wonder, and to win six yeah and i wonder what they're up against then i don't remember 
Who knows? But I, it's also because usually musicals don't, especially mm. now, musicals don't hit. But he was coming off of Whiplash that was hot and it made him hot. And that, and the, you had this follow up that was much talked about follow up. I remember people were like really excited about it because it was going to tap into this old style LA Hollywood feeling, which yes. Hollywood always loves. That kind of stuff because they like to celebrate themselves, which is why they have <laughs> award ceremonies. But also they do. They do have a thing for old style Hollywood, old like show kind of films. Yeah. I was excited for it. Yeah. Especially hearing that it was a musical because I love musicals. I like musicals that were first on stage and then adapted to film or movies that were specifically for film. So I was very excited about it, which is probably why I was also subsequently disappointed by <laughs> yeah maybe um yeah and it did get it even though the colors are much brighter than what you'd see in hollywood film from then it did kind of get the feel of it a little bit right there was kind of like a nostalgic even though like it wasn't it wasn't because like you have the the scene where she's like oh she needs her car and like oh which one is it? it's the prius and then you see like 17 prius keys so it was like old style and also not old style at the same time also, that you have like sort of kind of tap numbers, like you're not seeing tap so much these days, right? Even on Broadway, you don't see tap very often. Yeah, you, well, you don't really have long musical breaks and stuff like that so much. I know, it's such do a you, shame. You, kind of, you do and you don't. Certain shows, that's why something yeah. rotten, yeah, is amazing, and then other shows are also amazing, but for very different reasons. Yeah. Um, and oh, we didn't really talk about what the movie is about. So, for those people who haven't seen it. Um, basically you have Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling and they're both aspiring artists, Ryan Gosling in jazz and Emma Stone as an actress. And it's their journey through Hollywood and also navigating relationship with each other and what it, what the world of being an aspiring artist in LA is like. Yeah, but kind of probably a little bit nicer than what it really is like, but yeah. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, because she works as a barista on, like, one of the uh, picture lots. Right. Where I don't know if they specify. And he's working in a, uh, he's working as a musician in, like, a restaurant or something. And he, all, you know, all I want to do is play jazz, and all, all I want to do is act. Um, you know, so they do go to the different Hollywood parties, and that's where they meet up with each other. Um, and it does have a, a, some, a sense of reality to it, because most people who are working, who are aspiring artists, are also working in some random job. Sometimes you do have a job where you want to really be a musician, but you're working like, you know, you play music for kids. So like you're kind of doing what you want to do, but not exactly. And also they are this, and this was specific. They're a little bit older. So it wasn't just like, Oh, I'm an 18 year old kid. Who's just trying. It was, we're already in our late twenties or maybe even early thirties, which I think make, gives them a, like, they're more well-rounded and more interesting characters because it's not just, okay, 18 and you're trying it out. If you haven't gotten anywhere, okay, you've just tried it out. But they're really working and still showing that even after all of these years, they haven't made it. Yeah, you can't see my air quotes, but I did put quotes about made it because what is it to make it? Which is probably a discussion for another podcast. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um. That also, like, it starts off with this big musical number, which, by the way, nobody is sitting in the back of a truck in L.A. traffic, for the record, in case anyone thought it might be otherwise. Also, no one's seeing big musical numbers in L.A. traffic. I don't know if you've ever been in L.A. traffic before, but it doesn't happen. But it would make the commute in L.A. so much better yeah. if that happened. Even not every day, but every once in a while. Yeah. Or even if people were in the mood that the, those people are in, because people in L.A. are not friendly and nobody wants just because you're sitting for you spend like half your life in traffic that's true see that's why also no one no one would be so upbeat after sitting in traffic for something they wouldn't that's not the song they would be singing it would probably something much angrier but that's why i mean that see that's why it's la la land it's a la la land it's a la 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 land so that first song that was amazing when i went i saw this movie in theaters and when the first song came on because i was looking forward to this movie i was so excited because it was a big number. You had bright costumes. Um, Very upbeat. Upbeat. There was dancing. And I thought it did express L.A. life, not in a real way, but in a musical way, because things were happier and brighter. And you were looking at a real issue that people in L.A. put up with, which is traffic and another day of sun, which is 
never something to complain about, though people somehow find a way to complain about that too. So I thought it was so great. And then I think that's where the disappointment was because there was that first great number. There were one or, I think there's a number where Emma Stone and her friends are getting ready for the night out. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that one was really great. And then there's that big tap number. But there weren't any other... It's like the first act or the first half maybe because I don't maybe it's split into three acts. But the first half was so great. There were all these musical numbers. And then all of a sudden they said, okay, we we said we were a musical. Here are the musical numbers. Now the movie's going to end and we're not really going to have any other songs except for that one that M. Stone sings, which is great. But for the whole second half to not have so much music was very disappointing. Well, because some of it also focused more on Brian Gosling's character playing, I think. mm I don't know. You're right. They, they did start off more as a musical and then just kind of fade into more of a drama. Um, yeah. And then, well, spoiler alert, if you don't know what happens, they end up like breaking up at the end. And then also, I remember when so, some people tell me, oh, have you seen it? Have you seen it yet? And then like, they do this alternate ending at the end that I didn't like it or you think it goes like this. So I was preparing myself like, okay, what is this going to end up being? So I, I guess some of the excitement wasn't necessarily there anymore by the time mm. I saw it. And then it's not this alternate ending that ends up happening because they do break up and she ends up with somebody else. I don't know. That's total. We just, I just sidetracked. But then she ends up with somebody else. It's not, he kind of plays her a song of like, oh, look at what the, the idealistic look of what our life could have been, but, or might have been if we both would have succeeded at the same time or both would have whatever at the same time. But I didn't feel like there was an alternate ending. I think he's just showing her like, oh, look at, what it would look like in La 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 Land. <laughs> right. Or a dream sequence, which is kind of, kind of yeah. like old movie musicals have dream sequences. So yep. maybe that's yep. where that inspiration came from. I didn't mind. Okay, at the time, I a little bit minded that they didn't get together. Because when you're in the heat of the movie and you're yeah. watching it, you want the two protagonists to end up together. But it also doesn't make sense to break up so much. Because I know he doesn't show up to the play, but then he just drives all the way to pick her up right. to go to an audition. So you're like, I think that kind of makes up for it. So yeah. I think. But looking back, I don't like fine. They wanted to show that things don't always work out perfectly or, or that being together isn't necessarily working out perfectly because maybe they're not the person for you. So I don't mind that they didn't end up together. It just, when you're watching it, you want them to end up together because you want it to just be a musical, like in the old style. But I guess that's one of the reasons why it's not that kind of musical. Right. Which is why I would say if you are, if you're a parent and you love musicals and you're trying to get your kids into musicals, but you think, okay, if I show them something black and white or something with Fred Astaire, they're not going to get it. I don't think this is the one. First of all, the language is out of four. So, yeah, I mean, personal choice, but I wouldn't. Um, but also it doesn't, like there's not enough musical stuff. And there are a lot of great musicals that are old, but that won't feel dated. Like Music Man. Everyone can love the Music Man. It has a lot of kids in it, so your kids will love it. And I don't know. I, I like this movie. It had, I feel like it got what it was going for other than the musical part because it had the old style Hollywood vibe and there was, it was brighter than some, but it just, just the fact that it was supposed to be a musical. Like it wasn't what it said it was going to be. It ended up being blah, 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 blah. <laughs> And that's also, um, so apparently Ryan Gosling learned how to play the piano and learned how to tap for this. I don't know if they remember to teach him how to sing for this. Um, and Emma Stone, I think, was already, she was in a Broadway She was cabaret. in Cabaret. Yeah, I didn't feel like, I wasn't, I didn't feel one way or the other about her voice. I wasn't in particular, I didn't think like, oh, wow, such a great voice. And I wasn't like, oh, this is so terrible. I was just like, okay, this is her voice kind of thing. Yeah. So... I don't, which I think you were saying that, like, why do they always have to take, why can't they just take people who know how to sing? Because there are so many actors who do know how to sing or who grew up through trying to be the three tool actor, the singing, the dancing, and the singing, dancing, and acting. acting right. Right. And instead, I guess they were just going for the two big names. Or they can do. Weren't they in a film together before that? Uh, maybe. Well, with Steve Carell. Was that them or was it Ryan Reynolds? I don't, I, uh, I can't keep them straight. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Also, you could, they used to dub singing. Like Natalie Wood in both Gypsy and yeah, but you don't have to. West. No, you don't because but at there the are very people. Least you could like I know Zach. Okay, Zach Efron was moving away from the High School Musical thing, but he is an actor, an example of somebody who sings and acts, right? Or like or um or Hugh Jackman, 
who right. started off on Broadway. Yeah, and just lift someone from. I'm sure. Sur- Les Miserables is terrible, but he very, was very good in Greatest Showman. That was like his sound. Right. So you could find, unless, I mean, I guess there's always contracts and this, that, and who's open, blah. Or you got to work well with people, but still, you got to be able to find someone who actually grew up in music to do this. Right. There are plenty of people who can sing that I'm sure would be available, but. He, uh, the director said he really liked the chemistry that the two of them had and that they seemed like the old style Hollywood couple. And I will say Emma Stone does have a look about her that's, yeah. she does have kind of a classic look. And of course the kind of makeup you wear helps, but she has a, I think she's pretty, but she has an interesting look. She doesn't have that like, oh, she's so hot look. Right. She doesn't have that kind of look. She's kind of a girl next door, but the girl next door in 1955. Yeah. Because she has the, it's her eyes, I think, that make her. Maybe. Yeah. And how she tends to style her hair. And they do. They do work, they did work well together. I don't remember, like, cringing from, from Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling. I don't remember, like, cringing from that. Yeah. Like, oh God, who put those two together? <laughs> so, and that does make a big difference. You gotta have the right people. And sometimes that is what it's all about. Like, who do I want to be working with versus who's got the, the quote unquote talent level that I'm looking for? Right. So, hey, they could it. kind of pull it off. We'll let them do it. So. At least it wasn't, um, Emma Watson, who was apparently Your originally God. for the role. Here's the thing. I like Emma Watson, but she was, apparently she was filming for Beauty and the Beast at the time, so she wasn't available. But she, but she couldn't sing in Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, Beauty and the Beast, that was terrible. Uh, that was, that was distressing, to say the least. Maybe we should cover that sometime. Oh, we should. We should, and we should go make a list of all the, the Disney live actions that they messed up. <gasps> oh, that's all of them. Is there any that doesn't fit on the list so far? Wait, there was, oh, you know what? Cinderella was actually pretty good. Ish. All right, we're going to go take notes for this uh, because this is hot on our mind and we don't want to forget. Uh, So thank you so much for listening to Oh My Word. And uh, we'll catch you next time, I guess. Cheers, peoples. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of Oh My Word. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to subscribe and write a review. And please share the show with your friends. If you didn't like it, you can share the show with your enemies. Please also follow us on Instagram at Oh My Word Podcast. There we post episode updates, our ratings for each book, and also our personal reading recommendations. Music for the show is by Tim Burke. Editor is Gabriel Yaffe. We'll see you next week.